The 2023 elections might not take place if insecurity is not solved, says eminent, or say eminent Nigerians. And the River State APC governorship aspirants have signed a peace accord and a set of zoned the governorship position to the Riverine Ijo part of the state. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Kofi Patel. Once again, you welcome Nigerians, including the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Samson Ayo Kunle, and the Sultan of Sokoto, Saad Abubakar, have warned that widespread insecurity across the country is the greatest threat to the forthcoming elections in 2023. Also, Hanez Indigbo scribe O.K. Emuche has said that as soon as the issue of Igbo presidency uh, took a life of its own, the spate of insecurity heightened in the southeast. Now, on his part, a representative of the Northern Elders Forum, Professor Yusuf Osman, has argued that Nigeria's slide into anarchy began with the scrapping of history as a standalone subject from the school curriculum, while noting that elders had lost control of the youth across the country. He added that banditry was a social issue which must be addressed through justice and social reform. Now, joining us to discuss these, uh, we have Joseph Hayab, who is the chairman of the Christian Association. Association of Nigeria in Kaduna State, and of course, Charles Otu, who is a political analyst. Gentlemen, it's great to have you join us on Plus Politics. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for having us too. All right. Thank um, you for having us. Okay, so I'll start with you, uh, Joseph Hayab. Um, when we hear the when you hear the Christian Association, or when we hear uh, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria uh, and the Sultan of Sokoto uh, speak together about the state of the nation. This is something we don't hear or see on a regular basis. So what exactly should we make of it? Uh, in the past few years, efforts have actually been going to bring these two major religious groups together and the leaders have been leading by example. There is synergy, there is understanding, there is platform or there are platforms that these two religious leaders have been meeting, not just the two of them, but with other representatives to begin to talk about Nigeria, to begin to find solutions in Nigeria, to begin to offer meaningful advice about Nigeria. Uh, because we've realized that in the past, the divisions that have always come out in the public domain are the things that the enemies of Nigeria use to continue to suppress the country, to continue to cause havoc. Because when you deal with an enemy like this, and all the enemy will want to see is division. So that instead of you calling him or mentioning his fault, you will be busy fighting one another. I think time has come that leaders and all of us are beginning to see that unless we unite, unless we begin to speak with one voice, unless we come together to look at Nigeria as our country, to look at the issues that are comforting us as a problem on every Nigeria, not on Christians alone or Muslims alone, not on Southerners or Northerners alone, we cannot solve the problem. So for me, I actually applaud this effort and I commend those who facilitated that meeting to bring that togetherness. And I just hope that they will continue because it's not just because of 2023 election, it's about Nigeria. We need to be on the dialogue table as Nigeria, speak as Nigeria. Look, there's nothing wrong on that table. We exchange words and express our grievances, or express our pains, but at the end, we still embrace one another. That is how we can offer meaningful advice to this country. And that's when we will begin to have leaders and we'll hold those leaders accountable. But as long as we are divided, our leaders will want to do what they want to do because they know we are divided. We will not even hold them accountable. Instead of holding them accountable, we'll be blaming one another. All right, Charles, so too, uh, what are your thoughts in relation to what uh, your, your counterpart, um, uh, Joseph Haber, said with these two leading uh, figures coming out to speak about the state of the nation? Uh, we're well aware that um, religious leaders have been speaking a lot in recent time, uh, well documented. Uh, um, there's a lot of mistrust between both faiths, you know, um, and especially when you look at the north and southern divide. Um, do you think that uh, if this is something that would change the narrative as far as the country is concerned and remove the mistrust between both faiths um, as far as uh, polity and the, the nation in general is concerned? Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Reverend Harap. He has uh, actually
actually pointed out a very critical fact, and that is the fact that the insecurity does not select who should be a victim. You recall that the train that was uh, hijacked by terrorists on its way to Kaduna, uh, the, 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 the terrorists are concerned about the figure, the number they are having to negotiate with, or the cost, to cause the government to negotiate with. They really isolate people to say, oh, you are a Christian, we want to take you and keep you in custody. If you're a Muslim, you can go. So that move by the various religious groups, the Christian Association of Nigeria and uh, the Sultan, is a very good move and it's commendable. Um, it, it's actually sad that uh, we are referring to it and then making an analogy of how it's going to affect the 2023 general elections. Not minding that Nigeria will need to survive even before the 2023 general elections, and that if present trend continues, uh, there is no been saying that it is a real threat to the election. Because um, it, what it shows is that people have acquired massive arms. What it also shows is that with the political temperature rising speedily, uh, there could be alignments with people who are armed to disrupt the process of the election. We pray that doesn't happen to Nigeria. But then, if the recommendations made by these religious groups are not taken very seriously the way they should, uh, we should we could be heading to that doom doomsday. Our fears could be very founded because they could be well founded because what have been their recommendations? They are saying, look, the 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 the, 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 the generality of the security architecture needs to be repositioned. Yeah, you, you, you shouldn't find a scenario wherein the inspector general of police, for instance, this is Kaduna, parades and uh, confirms that the road leading to Kaduna is very safe. And the very next, within 48 hours, people are kidnapped on that road, people are killed. I mean, it, it, if people are sitting tied to their positions as uh, security heads, what it means, therefore, is that what the National Assembly told us may be correct that. Security in Nigeria has become a cash cow business. Insecurity in Nigeria that is plotted, harvested, and then people are making a mismatch of the nation from it. Look at the budget that has gone into security since uh, this dispensation in the last seven years. You see a progression towards, uh, of course, the recurrent expenditure. It, it, nobody is talking about what has been budgeted, where has okay. it gone into, and what has been the response towards those budgets. If we budgeted for uh, Toscana aircrafts, nobody is asking, have they been purchased? Who is responsible for what? Okay. What kind of arms and practice have these security heads came? And that is why I personally accept the views of the religious leaders that the, 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 the leadership of the various security heads need to give space for people who have a new sense of uh, ingenuity to take over. Okay. All right, interesting. Um, we've been having these, and I'll go back to Joseph Hayab. We've been having these statements in, in the past, especially before elections. I mean, we've seen things like the National Peace Council. We've seen things like, you know, politicians, uh, leading politicians and uh, candidates of the leading parties coming together to sign peace pacts in the past. And we still have violent elections. Now, we're just not talking about violence during elections. We're talking about um, uh, the state of the nation and insecurity that may threaten the 2023 elections. But uh, nothing changed in the past. So what can you say, uh, Joseph Hayab, uh, to convince me and the rest of our, our viewers that the statements of these elder statesmen, uh, statesmen, religious leaders will go far or hold any water? I think we must give credit to the efforts that have been uh, put together in the previous or in the last two elections. Nigerians will agree with me that in 2015, this Nigerian uh, Peace Committee, uh, whatever they call themselves, did a good job by engaging all the political actors at that time. And somehow Jonathan became the hero, hero by showing leadership and conceding to defeat. And in 2019, they also did a lot of effort I'm not sure we actually have records that during those elections, people were killed, as I'm hearing from you. What we do have record is that there is insecurity in the country. Not that it happens. So the insecurity in the country have grown to the extent that we are now scared that we may not even do the election. 
And so these leaders are calling and appealing that government should wake up and ensure that the country is safe because we must have a country before we vote for someone to lead us. If we don't have a country, if we vote for you, who are you going to lead? Are you going to lead just your family? So I think this also, because let's not confuse the whole conversation into as if there has been total failure. But, 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 but Joseph, Herb, what, what, what I'm saying is, is we've had these statements in the past during elections, before elections, and I can give you examples of states across the country where violence, electoral violence was recorded, even pre-election violence was recorded, or election-related violence was recorded. We had religious leaders, you know, and, and elder statesmen, like we're having now, visit some of these states, and the, the leading candidates were made to sign peace packs. They came out, they even cut cakes and stuff, but people still died. They're still armed thugs who went out and, and it's called to the elections, and they, they, they kill themselves. Those who, who used, you know, um, okay. uh, uh, security agencies, used them. So, this I mean, cannot all be this talk of the yeah. peace committee yeah. or the religious leaders. Yeah. We understand the kind of political class we have in Nigeria, people who have no ideology, people who have no agenda, people who just want to rule us by force, people who want to become leaders whether people like it or not. Unfortunately, they are taking advantage of the poverty in the country, they are taking advantage of the low education among many young people and giving them drugs and giving them money to go and burn and destroy homes just because they want to win election. And that's why we feel strongly that there has been a shift because in the past, they do those things because they will use it to rig election or use it to manipulate election people. And we are just believing that somehow we are making progress with the signing of the new electoral act. But that's not enough. We are talking about the country in general, not just about election. There is no peace in the East. There is no peace in the West. There is no peace in the North. Every day, people are dying. Every day, numbers are being thrown out there telling you that so soon. Number. Like yesterday in Plateau State, 80 people killed. This is terrible. And in Kaduna State, it's like an everyday business. You hear the one you hear, and many have been just scared. People just mourn in their home without necessarily complaining. So what we are saying today is that, look, there is a new, there's a growing insecurity in the country that even the relative understanding we used to have during election time may not be possible come 2023. Can we start doing something at this moment? Can we take steps that will stop and bring about sanity so that when we come, people can come out to vote. But when we don't do that, people may likely not come out to vote because people must be alive before they vote. All right. Interesting, Joseph Hyde. Uh, 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 Charles O2, um, uh, I don't know which of the religions you belong to, whether you're an atheist. I mean, that's, that's your, your, your prerogative. But, but uh, I do assume you've sat in, in an occasion. I'm assuming you've sat in an occasion where you've had VIPs, for instance, governors or ministers, and you've had um, uh, maybe a clergyman, either an imam, uh, a sheikh, or, or some sort of a uh, priest. Is, 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 it, is, it, is it, are these are religious leaders part of the problem? Why wait till some months before the election for things to get to this crescendo of insecurity before, say, these things? For instance, we talk about the volatile parts of the north of the country, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Joseph uh, Charles II, the northern part of the country, northeast, east, northwest, and north central, predominantly Muslim. Another volatile part of the country, southeast, predominantly Christian. You have Catholics, Anglicans, and then, of course, the Pentecostal churches. Have our religious leaders spoken truth to power enough? What? Well, thank you so much. It, it, it doesn't appear uh, like we echo what. Uh, uh, of course, I'm a Christian, and uh, uh, I'm happy this conversation is coming. I'm not coming across um, religious uh, groups or divides. It, it is no longer, you know, some people trying to say, oh, that, or pretend or sit on defense about it. Uh, it echoes what uh, a, a, a clergyman in the eastern part of Nigeria said that most times what pastors and other religious heads, including reverend uh, fathers do in the, in the country, just like the imams, uh, it's uh, at most at best awful. Sometimes you see them, they just want to sit on the fence and build in the good book of the present government of the day without knowing that their duty actually as religious leaders, because these governors, these uh, senators, the lawmakers and all sorts of uh, people that are in politics come to them to pay obeisance. 
And that is actually an opportunity to speak through to power. Even uh, in the set I practice, uh, which is uh, uh, Christianity, you, you see people in the days of the old, in the biblical examples, where the leaders got to church and they were told, this is how you should act. And uh, that has been lacking, sincerely, among our religious leaders, on both divides, both Christians, both the Muslims and the traditionalists, and of us, all manner of religions. We've seen uh, people get to power and they are just, the church is the only interested in the politician completing a building project for the church. And the church is shut off for that same reason. I will cite an example in my state of Ebony, for instance. Ebony, you will find out that the current chairman is a member of the state executive council. Not just a member of the state executive council, he is even the closest person to the governor of my state. And you, you still find out that, look, this man, if he had been advised rightly, he shouldn't be taking certain actions, which means the priest is there. Another priest, for instance, who is a Catholic priest, Reverend Timothy Nguta, is detained or remanded in prison. And the same Catholic priest, who is a member of the ESCO, is not talking about or doing so much to cause about uh, uh, that, that can lead to his release from a uh, uh, prison. What are the issues? The church depends largely on these political uh, uh, demagogues or these politicians to survive. And because of it, they are taking away the power to speak truth to power to them, uh, you know, from them. And what that is taking away, as has been the case in the last seven years, you see things going as awful and early as they have gone, and you see the church only lamenting and complaining. So goes to, same goes to the uh, Islamic religion. Of course, you heard about the Sheikh in Abuja mosque that was suspended. What was his crime? That he said, look, this is security, has gotten out of hand. People have to sit up to their responsibilities and take charge. And the imam was suspended. From suspension, he was sacked. So, you see, it cuts across a religious divide. But if, we, if the leaders continue to hear these truths from religious leaders, not just when election is coming, they come to bring them together to sign peace talks and talk about how it's affecting the, uh, the, the how it's going to affect the election. What we are giving is just a structural arrangement that makes it readily, make people think, okay, all this progress is towards the, the election. So if you have an election, what comes before, what comes thereafter, after an election? So that has made it difficult. The church and the, the, the Islamic uh, leaders, the church leaders and the Islamic leaders alike, have not held the government reasonably accountable because they have the pulpit. None of the leaders walk away from the church. Mm. None of the leaders walk away from the mosque being told the truth. Okay. The highest that could happen is what happened there can be slammed with suspension. But if it becomes a norm that you cannot have a safe haven, if you enter this church, you're going to hear the same truth. If you enter mm. this mosque, you're going to hear the same truth. You will right. have the option that you need to think about how to redress your... All right. You know, Okay, okay. So, Charles, so too interesting. I I'll come back to Joseph Hayab of the Christian Association of Nigeria. You've said him. I've asked him a question. Are our religious leaders speaking truth to power? He says, point blank, no. Um, what do you think about this? Because all these politicians, they attend church or they go to the mosque for their prayers. You know, they get laid hands, or they, get, they receive laying of hands. Some receive prophecies and anointing. And I've said it before that never before, I mean, especially from the last administration into this one, uh, before in the history of Nigeria, has the church or the religious circles, maybe even uh, the mosque yeah, or Islam, had as much influence in, in the polity. It's never been as much as it is uh, in these days across the country, across the country. I mean, we can go back to... Uh, liberation theology as propounded by uh, the famous uh, Peruvian theologian of the Dominican, a priest of the Dominican order, um, uh, Gustavo Gutierrez. And we saw what he did for the people and how he spoke truth to power. So what do you say to, to, your, your, to Charles O'Toole's remark that uh, our, our religious leaders have not spoken truth to power? It's a pretty long question, but I hope I, I was able to pass. Well, I think the recent development should uh, have changed his uh, thinking, but that's the truth. The truth is that We've not had enough religious leaders speaking truth to power. We must honor to that. Because when you have a large part of religious leaders and you just have probably 10 or 20 speaking truth to power, it's not enough. 
Uh, some of us who do come out in this station, you know that I've always been here. I think this is the first time in the past six months that I'm even smiling. Every time I come on this media, I am frowning, I'm angry because I've lost a loved one. Things are not going in right. Kaduna is on fire. But you see, just one voice speaking every day. Uh, all the those in power will just tag you as an enemy or tag you, give you some names. So I quite agree with him that we've not really been doing enough. Many of my colleagues should wake up because if you allow just one person, let's have an example, when the imam came out and speak, what was true? Many clerics are agreeing that what he said is true, but how many of them have come publicly to agree? Even if they say they agree with him, they're just saying that behind the scene. Why? They don't want to come publicly and say we agree with him because they are thinking they are going to lose their friendship with those politicians. But what that man have done is to set the pace and more clerics are supposed to come out in support and condemnation of evil. Because how on earth will you be asking for election when we have almost a large number of people in the hands of the bandits? The bandits are even threatening the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria are saying that, look, you know what we want. We are not asking you for, our, for money. Do what we want. Who are they? Our government should be strong enough to show them the might of government. But because nothing is really happening. So if you ask me to put the answer very simple, not many clerics have actually been speaking truth to power. Okay. But there are clerics who are speaking truth to power. Yeah. They, have, they have been called names. They've either been tagged as uh, supporting a particular political interest. I want to encourage those few clerics that don't give up, continue to speak truth to power. I don't want to beat my chest and say whether I'm one, but those who have been following me can tell yes, whether yes. I am we, one. We know, we know about that, especially those, of, those of you. Truth that yeah. not enough. Mm. Uh, about two weeks ago, I watched something that quite was quite disturbing. On one of the national television stations, clerics, Christian pastors, people who dress, you know, to be honest, to be candid with our viewers here, that sometimes people who go to the market and buy certain regalia and dress and call themselves bishop, and they were binding and losing and claiming that some people are supposed to be president. The fact that they are even saying that God, those people are a gift to Nigeria. As a Nigerian, I know the history behind those people. I can't even understand you calling them gift to Nigeria. Well, they've not been able to do anything in the state where they are governing, or they've not been able to do anything where they are operating. But you see, this is the kind of system. But here is the crux of the matter. Okay. There is so much hunger in the land. Yeah. So people now hide under religion, wanting to get food. That's why they cannot speak truth to power. Uh, so I quite agree with the yeah. that not many religious leaders have been speaking truth to power. Uh, uh, but this yeah. effort by the Sultan and the Khan president must be commended because at least now the leaders are speaking. So others should follow so that the voice will be added. And when more people begin to speak, then those who think that they will not be wholly responsible know that we have woken up from our slumber. All right. I, I, I want to thank you and you know for the good work you're doing and uh, you've, been, you've been vocal. Uh, be, before I, I, I be round up, uh, uh, Joseph Hayab, um, apart from speaking truth to power, we know the genesis of these conflicts in the country. I do not know if we'll be talking about, um, uh, uh, you know, this banditry if Boko Haram had not started like a joke that was treated with kids' gloves in the time of uh, uh, Chief Olusha Gobatsanjo when their leader was killed. But these guys profess to be followers of Islam. You know, and, and I do not know if it's impossible for the Islamic clerics led by the Sultan, with all respect to him, to have along the line interface to make sure, see what they can do. We go down to the southern part of the country and we know what is happening in the southeast. Of course, we have the Biafran agitation, but we know how devout people from that part of the country are, you know, just to the Christian faith. Would it not have been possible for the leaders of the Christian faith and the, 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 the Jewish faith in Nigeria to interface with the, 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 the proponents and those who started these agitations. Because whether the gunmen are known or unknown, it would not have been this way or this bad if that agitation had not gone the way it did. You know? so, so I don't know what you have, to, you have to say about that in just a sentence or two. Yeah, the pro, truth about pro, it is that be, it, pro, may being be proactive, yeah. domain, it may not be in the public domain, but I'm fully aware of efforts by certain bishops uh, because they've not asked me to mention their names, I've known about series of meetings that they've been holding with the Biafra youth groups that have been agitating. This and year, they are making last year, the fact about it that they even visited Kano in prison. But well, maybe it's too, to maybe me. it's become too late. When this thing started, no, 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 some no, no, people no, no. were, not were promoting it and defending it and encouraging, on. cheering see, on. The agitation in the southeast was wrongly managed by government. When government supposed to initiate dialogue, 
government thought that she could just crush them. Let's be honest to ourselves. You see, that's why one of the famous uh, outspoken senator of Nigeria, a former senator, said that when it comes to uh, bandits of northern Nigeria, they are being treated with kid gloves. When others act the same way, then they use big sticks and start pursuing them. Right. Let's call it spade right. a spade. The okay. problem in this is the poor approach to these people. But right. if you think the religious leaders have not spoken to them, they are speaking to them. And All that's right. exactly one of the things that Gumi went out to do from my conversation with him. The only place I disagree with him was when he started coming publicly on media and was changing who they are to calling them another title. That was when he... But I realized that he may have done that, I'm sorry, with due respect to him, out of fear because they did admit that when they approached them, the people were okay. violence against them. They even okay. quoted all the various interviews they've ever said on television. We, we have radio, to go. And they were coming against them. So they begin to speak nicely and mildly to win the support of the bandit. But there are efforts going on. It may not be in the public media because of certain reasons, but honestly speaking, I know there are efforts all right. going Thank on. Thank you very much. Uh, Charles too. I was going to come to you, but I've been informed that we're out of time. Uh, so I want to thank both of you for, for your interesting contributions. Sincerely appreciate it. Uh, Joseph Hab is a, a chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Kaduna State, and Charles Otu is a political analyst. They've given us an interesting analysis of the issues at hand. Gentlemen, thanks for your time. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for having us. And thanks for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we discuss the possibilities of, of zoning in the All Progressives Congress in River State, of course, and uh, what's happening out of the 2023 governorship elections there. Stay with us.